they find a single pinky bone from a little finger and uh, they do the DNA testing on it, they're able to get a complete a genome from it and what they discover is this isn't a Neanderthal, this isn't an anatomically modern human being, this is another human species. As we dig into human evolution, we're uncovering more than just our ancestors. We're finding clues to a much deeper, hidden history. With every new discovery, we're on the brink of astonishing revelations. The real challenge is, are we ready for the truths that lie ahead? Remains of a previously unknown early human species have been unearthed in Cagayan. One, the Homo luzonensis. Imagine discovering a tiny, tree-climbing human cousin who lived just 50,000 years ago. That's Homo luzonensis, a newly identified hominid species from Luzon, the largest island in the Philippines. Found in 2019, their fossils revealed a mix of modern and ancient traits. Small, human-like teeth paired with curved finger and toe bones that suggest they were expert climbers who likely spent a lot of time in trees. The most surprising part? These early humans somehow made it to Luzon, an island surrounded by deep waters long before we thought humans could cross such distances. This means they might have been some of the earliest seafarers, navigating seas when most of humanity was still figuring out fire. There's even a theory that Homo luzonensis could be descendants of ancient African populations that ventured out much earlier than previously believed. Two, the Hobbit people of Indonesia. Meet Homo floresiensis, also known as the Hobbit people due to their small stature, only about 3.5 feet tall. Discovered in 2003, these ancient people lived on the Indonesian island of Flores until just 50,000 years ago. Despite having brains the size of a chimpanzee's, they were surprisingly skilled. They made stone tools, hunted small elephants, and even battled giant lizards. What's really fascinating is how these little guys managed to cross deep ocean waters to make it to Flores. Just like Homo luzonensis, there's speculation that they too might have descended from ancient African migrants their evolution taking a unique path once they landed on their island paradise. 3. The Homo naledi Discovered in South Africa's rising star cave system in 2013, the Homo naledi has some weird and wonderful traits that make it stand out in the human family tree. First off, Homo naledi had a mix of features that seem straight out of a science fiction novel. Its skull and teeth looked more like those of early humans, while its body size and shape were more similar to earlier hominins. Imagine a creature with a tiny brain, but a body that's almost like ours. What makes Homo naledi especially weird is how it was discovered. The remains were found in a deep, narrow cave chamber, suggesting that these ancient humans might have deliberately placed their dead in the cave, a behavior that points to complex social and possibly ritualistic practices, which is pretty advanced for their time. 4. The Children of the Mokan Tribe What would you give to see underwater as clearly as you do on land? Well, for the Mokan Tribe, it means going to some extreme lengths. These kids have an incredible adaptation called amphibious vision, letting them see underwater twice as clearly as most people by constricting their pupils to the max. Think pinprick size. Plus, they've got a strong mammalian dive reflex that lets them dive deep and hold their breath like pros. Now, here's the wild part. Some Mokan youngsters go through a painful rite of passage to dive even better. They intentionally rupture their eardrums, causing bleeding and dizziness for about a week. But once they recover, diving becomes much more comfortable. 5. The Werewolf Syndrome Ever heard of Werewolf Syndrome? It's a real condition, and it's just as bizarre as it sounds. 
hypertrichosis causes people to grow an excessive amount of hair all over their bodies. Think full body fur coat from head to toe. Some people are born with this condition, while others develop it later in life. It's not just about looks either. Hypertrichosis can sometimes be linked to other health issues or genetic mutations. One case that caught global attention was a teenager, Lalit Patidar from India, with incredibly dense hair growth, making him look like he walked out of a horror film, sparking a mix of awe and sympathy. Six, the case of the Bajau Sea Nomads. Living off the coast of Southeast Asia, especially around the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia, the Bajau Sea Nomads are known for their extraordinary diving skills. The Bajau are basically human fish, plunging down to crazy depths of up to 230 feet and holding their breath for an insane 13 minutes. It's almost like they have gills. Turns out, their bodies have evolved to make them even better at diving. Their spleens are supersized, acting like extra oxygen tanks during dives, and they even have special genes that enhance their underwater abilities. Spending much of their lives on traditional boats called Lepa, the Bajau blend their incredible physical adaptations with a deep cultural connection to the ocean. 7. Mexico's Superhuman Runners the Raramuri, or Tarahumara, from Mexico's Sierra Madre are true legends of long-distance running. These amazing folks can casually cover over 100 miles, making even the best marathoners look like they're just taking a stroll. So, what's their secret? Well, it's a blend of nature and nurture. Genetically, their muscles are built for endurance, and their bodies turn carbs from their maize-heavy diet into energy like a well-oiled machine. Plus, living at high altitudes has given their bodies a turbo boost, making them super efficient at snatching oxygen from the thin mountain air, a key ingredient for their incredible running. The coolest part? Heart disease is practically unheard of among the Raramuri likely thanks to their active lifestyle and those awesome genes. 8. The Nose-Plugging Tribe of India In the northeastern reaches of India, the Apatani tribe holds a tradition that involves facial tattoos and large wooden nose plugs worn by the women not just for looks, but as a defense against something truly terrifying – kidnapping. You see, back in the day, Neighboring tribes had a nasty habit of snatching Apatani women. So the Apatani got creative, using these unique markings to make their women less appealing to potential captors. It's a harsh reality, but these striking tattoos and nose plugs were a powerful way to protect their own. 9. The Taboo People The Wadabe, also known as the Taboo People of West Africa, have a beauty ritual that's off the charts. It's the men who go all out, transforming themselves into living works of art to woo the ladies. Their annual Gerawal festival is like a mashup of a beauty pageant and a dance party, where the guys flaunt their style and charisma to impress potential partners. Think elaborate face paint, colorful costumes, and some seriously impressive moves. But here's the twist. It's not just about looking good. They also use their singing and dancing skills to steal someone else's wife. 10. The Six-Digit People In Ecuador's Amazon jungle, the Warani tribe is a real-life mystery, living in near isolation. They're known for their incredible six-digit phenomenon. Some members sport six fingers and six toes, and even extra teeth. But that's not all. Despite their remote lifestyle, the Warani seem to dodge major health issues. No cancer, no heart disease, no high blood pressure, and no allergies. It's like they've got a health cheat code. Their unique genes and disease-free status make them a fascinating example of how isolation and genetics can create a tribe that's truly one of a kind. 11. 
The Hadza tribe. The Hadza of Tanzania are real-life experts in hunting and gathering. Living in the African bush, they've developed some seriously impressive skills. Their eyesight is so sharp, they can spot tiny animals from miles away and follow faint footprints with incredible accuracy. Generations of close contact with nature have finely tuned these abilities. But that's not all. The Hadza also boast incredible gut microbiomes packed with diverse bacteria that help them digest wild plants and berries that most people wouldn't touch. 12. The Nutcracker Man Paranthropus Boise, the Nutcracker Man, is undeniably one of the coolest characters in the early human family tree. This ancient hominin who roamed East Africa around 1.4 to 2.3 million years ago was built like a powerhouse, especially when it came to his jaw and teeth. With jaws so strong and teeth so massive, they could crack open the toughest nuts and chew through fibrous plants like it was no big deal. Paranthropus Boise had molars the size of quarters and their jaw muscles were anchored by a ridge on the top of their skull called the sagittal crest. Think of it as the natural equivalent of a bodybuilder's bulging biceps. 13. The Tibetan Sherpas Tibetan Sherpas have adapted to life in the Himalayas with some serious genetic upgrades. Living at altitudes above 12,000 feet, Sherpas have evolved unique traits that help them thrive where most people would struggle to breathe. Their secret weapon? A special gene called EPAS-1. This gene boosts their red blood cells production, letting them carry more oxygen through their bodies. Sherpas also have larger lung capacities and super efficient blood circulation, which makes climbing steep mountains and hiking through thin air way easier. Sherpas are truly custom built for the high life. 14. The Padang Tribe of Myanmar. The Padang Tribe, also known as the Kayin or Karen from Myanmar and Thailand, is famous for their pretty interesting jewelry, neck rings. These aren't just for show, they're actually part of an age-old tradition. From a young age, Padang girls start wearing these rings, adding more as they grow up. The idea isn't to stretch the neck itself, but to compress it, making it appear longer. Prolonged use of these rings can lead to some changes in the neck and shoulder bones, though the actual vertebrae don't get stretched. Instead, the collarbones and upper ribs get pushed down giving the illusion of a longer neck. 15. The Suri tribe's body modifications. Deep in the remote Omo Valley of Ethiopia, the Suri tribe practices forms of body modification that might look extreme to some, but are packed with deep cultural significance. Both men and women engage in intricate scarification rituals, carving intricate designs into their skin with sharp tools. These scars aren't just decorative, they're badges of beauty, bravery, and social status within the community. For women, one of the most striking modifications involves lip plates. When girls hit puberty, they get their lower lip pierced and gradually stretched with increasingly larger clay discs. The size of the lip plate is a symbol of beauty and a woman's worth in the eyes of potential suitors. 16. The Teeth Sharpening Tradition Ever wanted a smile that could rival a shark's? Well, the Mentawai people of Indonesia take dental aesthetics to a whole new level. For them, sharp, pointy teeth are a symbol of beauty and spiritual well-being. Using traditional tools, they meticulously file their teeth into sharp points, a process that's considered a rite of passage. While it might seem a bit intense to us, the Mentawai believe it enhances their attractiveness and aligns them with the spirits of their ancestors. 17. The Fingertip Sacrifice High in the mountains of Indonesia, the Dani people have a tradition that's both fascinating and a bit chilling. When a loved one passes away, 
the women sometimes amputate a part of their finger as an expression of grief. It might sound extreme, but for the Danny, this act is a profound way to connect with the spirit world and honor the deceased. They believe it helps appease the spirits and brings balance back to the community after a loss. Imagine the strength and courage it takes to go through such a ritual. While this practice is becoming less common these days, it still serves as a powerful reminder of the Danny's unique cultural practices and their profound understanding of life and death. But that's not all. Danny men also partake in a similar practice. As part of their dowry, they may cut off a finger to show their commitment and respect. 18. The Dinka Tribe The Dinka people of South Sudan aren't just known for their towering height. They're also the perfect example of how humans can adapt to even the harshest environments. Living in a scorching hot and arid region, the Dinka have evolved to be exceptionally tall and lean. This body type is like a built-in air conditioner, allowing them to dissipate heat more efficiently and stay cool under the blazing sun. It's nature's way of helping them beat the heat. 19. The Pygmies of Africa The Mbuti of Africa's Congo Rainforest are like real-life forest sprites. Known for their shorter stature, Mbuti adults typically stand around 4.5 feet tall. Their compact size helps them stay agile and maneuver through the thick undergrowth effortlessly. They're perfectly suited to navigating the dense forest and staying cool in the steamy jungle. Their bodies are fine-tuned for their environment in other ways too. They've got a knack for using oxygen super efficiently, a must-have skill in the rainforest's humid, low-light conditions. It's like they've evolved their own internal air purifier. 20. The Kalash People Tucked away in the remote valleys of Pakistan, the Kalash people are like a living genetic puzzle. Unlike their neighbors, they've got this mix of European and South Asian ancestry, making scientists wonder if they might be descendants of some ancient explorers who wandered through the area. Their isolated lifestyle has kept their traits intact things like lighter skin, hair, and eyes, which are pretty uncommon in the surrounding populations. It's like they're a snapshot of a different time and place, offering a glimpse into the tangled history of human migration and how people settled in this part of the world. 21. The Himba Tribe In the scorching desert of Namibia's Kunini region, the Himba people are a vibrant example of human adaptability. Their iconic red ochre paste isn't just a fashion statement, it's a survival essential. This clever mix of ochre and butterfat acts as a natural sunscreen, protecting their skin from the blazing sun and keeping those pesky bugs away. This paste forms a protective barrier that might even help prevent skin problems caused by too much sun. Over time, this daily application may have contributed to their skin's natural resilience and ability to handle harsh desert conditions. And the Himba's ingenuity doesn't stop there. Their bodies are masters of water conservation, a crucial skill in one of the driest places on Earth. These folks are proof that humans can adapt and thrive, even in the most extreme environments. But human adaptation isn't just about physical traits or survival tactics. Sometimes it delves into the realm of the macabre, with rituals and practices that challenge our modern sensibilities. 22. The Aghori Hindu Sect The Aghori are a small Hindu sect in India with some seriously eyebrow-raising practices, including ritual cannibalism. But don't get too freaked out. It's not about satisfying some gruesome craving. For the Aghori, it's all about spirituality. They use these extreme rituals to break away from everyday norms and connect with deeper spiritual truths. They believe that eating human flesh 
helps them face death and decay head-on, shedding worldly attachments and reaching a higher level of consciousness. It might sound wild, but for them, it's a way to achieve spiritual freedom. Their practices remind us how diverse human beliefs can be, stretching the limits of what we might understand. 23. The Four People The Four People of Papua New Guinea also had a pretty intense tradition involving cannibalism. They practiced endocannibalism, where they ate the flesh of their deceased loved ones. It might sound like something out of a horror movie, but for the four, it was a way to honor the dead and keep their spirits close. Unfortunately, this practice led to serious consequences. It spread a disease called Kuru, a brain disorder that causes uncontrollable shaking, loss of coordination, and ultimately, the end of life. Kuru was transmitted by eating infected human brain tissue, a tragic example of how cultural practices can sometimes have unintended and heartbreaking outcomes. 24. The Ritual of Self-Mummification Self-mummification, or Sokushinbutsu, is one of the most extreme spiritual practices you might hear about. It was done by some Buddhist monks in Japan who were on a quest for ultimate enlightenment. These monks would spend years in a tough regimen of self-starvation and meditation. First, they started by cutting out pretty much all food, except tiny amounts of nuts and seeds. Over time, their diet got even more restricted as they aimed to lose as much body fat as possible. The idea was to remove all the flesh from their bodies so that when they died, they would essentially become mummies. As they went through this rigorous process, they also engaged in deep meditation to prepare their minds for the afterlife. The final stage involved them sitting in a meditation pose and waiting for death to come. The goal was to transcend the physical world and achieve a higher level of spiritual purity. 25. The Sky Burials The ritual of sky burial is practiced in Tibet and some other parts of Asia. Instead of burying or cremating the dead, the body is left out in the open on a mountaintop. Why? Because it's believed that this helps the soul leave the physical world and reach the heavens. The body is placed on a high cliff or designated area, and then it's exposed to the elements and sometimes offered to vultures and other scavengers. This might sound a bit unusual, but for the people who practice it, it's all about giving back to nature and continuing the cycle of life. The idea is that by letting the birds and animals consume the body, the spirit can transcend and the remains help nourish other creatures, turning death into a part of nature's grand circle. It's a ritual that reflects deep respect for the environment and the belief in the interconnectedness of all life. 26. The Bloodletting Rituals In ancient Maya and Aztec cultures, bloodletting was more than just a ritual. It was a key part of their spiritual and religious life. To connect with the gods and ensure the cosmos remained in balance, people would perform intense ceremonies involving self-inflicted wounds. They'd pierce their tongues, ears, or even their genitals, letting blood flow as an offering to the deities. This wasn't just about the physical act. It was believed that the blood had powerful spiritual significance. It was thought to nourish and appease the gods, maintaining cosmic order and securing divine favor. By shedding their own blood, they hoped to keep the gods happy and ensure the well-being of their society. 27. The Bullet Ant Initiation the Satare Mawe tribe of the Amazon has a coming-of-age ritual. That's the stuff of nightmares, the bullet ant initiation. Young boys must gather hundreds of these ferocious insects, whose sting is said to be 30 times more painful than a bee's. The ants are then woven into gloves, stingers, facing inward. With faces painted and hearts pounding, 
the boys slip on these gloves and endure the agonizing stings for 10 excruciating minutes. The pain is so intense, it's like being shot, hence the name Bullet Ant. But this isn't just about pain. It's a test of courage, marking the transition from boyhood to manhood. 28. The Taipusam Piercings During the Hindu festival of Taipusam, celebrated in places like Tamil Nadu in India and Malaysia, devotees go all out for Lord Murugan, the god of war and victory. They pierce their skin with skewers and hooks, and sometimes even pulling chariots or carrying heavy loads as part of their devotion. It's not just about the piercings themselves, it's about showing their deep commitment to their faith and pushing through pain to reach spiritual purification. This dramatic display of faith is a powerful way for them to connect with their spirituality and demonstrate their dedication. These extraordinary stories only scratch the surface. What else might be hiding in the shadows of our history? Are we prepared to confront the unsettling rituals and practices that have shaped cultures around the world?